Hey guys, thank you so much for coming back to my channel. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about my one year old. I'm gonna be sharing a few things with you guys. I'm gonna be sharing my thoughts on the first birthday. I'm gonna be sharing why I think it's important that you have a village or a tribe. I'm gonna be sharing quality over quantity. And I also wanna to talk to you guys about fitness and what I'm doing in that arena as well. In this video, I am also going to be talking to you about breastfeeding. Am I still breastfeeding? If I'm still breastfeeding, when am I gonna stop breastfeeding? I'm also gonna talk in this video about how having a baby changes your relationship. And is that good, is that bad, how does that affect things? And you know, I'm always honest, so you can expect that from me. So let's jump right in to first birthday shenanigans. I have friends who have gone what I would consider like above and beyond overboard for their kid's first birthday. And let's be real, none of us remember our first birthday. And so in my opinion, there's no reason to go all crazy. Like when I say I know some people who've gone above and beyond, I'm talking rented a hall and spent as much money on their kid's first birthday party as they did for their wedding. Like that's just crazy. I'm not trying to offend anyone. So if you're watching this and you're like, that was me, like, all right, more power to you. I'm amongst the belief that if you're not hurting anybody, then like, do your thing, you know, to each their own. But it's just like, why, why do people go so extreme for the first birthday? So going into this, I was like, yeah, for my son's first birthday party, hopefully you guys can hear me over the the monitor and the white noise machine. Um, but I was like, we're just gonna like do something low key, like keep it simple, no big deal. Okay, so somehow what ended up happening is on his actual birthday, we did a little something and we got invited to a birthday party on his actual birthday. So we did a little something and then he went to another party. And then we had a party for family. And then we had a party just for friends. So somehow he had like three and a half parties, if you want to call it that. And so I am a walking, talking hypocrite right now because I'm the girl who was like, people just go above and beyond. And then my kid had like three parties. Um, but I will say that they were like super low key, very easy peasy, chill. Um, family party was at the house. Friends party was at the park. Um, we did a little like thing where we took him out one for a, a separate thing and then um, as I mentioned went to another birthday party on his birthday so it wasn't like we spent the amount of money you know that you would spend for a wedding or anything like that um, because my son is happy if you give him spoons and a box like great he's gonna play with that for the next 30 minutes so that's why I don't think we need to go above and beyond and be all crazy now, I wanna tell you guys some fun facts about my little munchkin boy. He is almost 24 pounds. He is in the 97th percentile for height. He has um, almost eight teeth. He loves to eat hummus and seaweed and black olives. And he is liking fruit now, so that's cool. Um, I've offered him organic chicken and some organic meats and so far, it's not like meat's a huge deal for him, which is kind of cool, because if he decided he wanted to be a vegetarian, I would be super on board with that. Um, and I'm okay if he wants to eat meat too, like whatever's healthy for him is good. And then uh, he says a lot of words. He says um, cha-cha-cha and wow and light and dog and go and dada. Okay, so you get it? He says lots of words. He still doesn't say mama, which is making me a little bit crazy. He he does say something, it's like Baba, like with a B. That's not Mama though. So I'm not giving him credit for that. When he's upset, and he that's when he says that. He's like, Baba. I'm like, hmm, I don't know. I think you're trying, maybe. But I think you can do better because if you ask him, what does the cow say? He goes, moo. 
Okay, well, if you can say moo, you can say ma, right? So, no excuses. <laughs> um, what else? He's not walking yet, which is uh, good because we have a lot of stairs in our house. So, I'm super fine with him not walking. We do have to childproof this house because he is getting into everything. The Tupperware, Tupperware cupboard is like his favorite thing. Uh, but a lot of our Tupperware is glass, so we need to get some protection on those covers as quick as possible. We need to get those childproof. He is super, super, super happy, super social. He really likes um, to interact with people. You know, for those of you who follow me um, on Instagram, at Michelle Motivation, you've seen a lot of our, like, adventures and stuff that we do. But it's funny because he, he would prefer to talk to people and to interact with people at these events than to like do the activities. He does the activities, but he loves to find the kids that he can play with and touch them and you know, like he'll put his hand on their shoulder and look at them like, hi, I'm here, let's play, be my friend. And so he's super freaking adorable. Okay, let's talk a little bit about, you know, your village, your tribe, quality over quantity, that kind of thing. When we had the baby shower, there were approximately 80 or so people. You guys are welcome to watch that video if you want um, to kind of see everything, but we approximately had 80 people. Um, so I was surprised, honestly, by the fact that about 80 people showed up to the baby shower. And yet, I don't even, I don't know, like majority of the people who showed up to the baby shower have not even met my son yet. He's a year old. Some of these people, live 20 minutes away some of these people live two hours away like I get life happens I get that there's distance that can challenge things but I have people who have driven and flown to meet him so when you have like family and friends who could drive over and be here in 20 minutes and they haven't come over to meet my son I was surprised by that so that kind of sparked for me this knowing that quality is always more important than quantity. And so I just made it my goal to find my tribe. And what I mean by that is I want to surround my son um, and my husband and I feel the same way. We want to surround him with love and support and positive people and these don't necessarily have to be people who think exactly the same way we do and feel exactly the same way we do because we can learn from each other's differences but this is definitely a group of people who are you know in the same book we don't have to be on the same page all the time but we're definitely in the same book and so I have been meeting people at like fitness groups that I'm that I'm in now and mommy groups and the birth center um, moms that I met where I gave birth to my son these people have become my tribe these are the people that are going to be the chosen family so you know I don't feel that just because someone is blood related to you that they're family and I don't believe that they just automatically have rights to be in your life I think it's so important that you pull the weeds out of your garden so your flowers can grow and that applies more than ever and more than anything to your life and if there are people in your life that are toxic or um, unwanted you are under no obligation to keep them in your life zero obligation cut them like a split end on your head <laughs> um, so because we pulled the weeds out of our garden we wanted to plant the flowers and that is what our tribe has become for us these are the flowers in our garden hope this makes sense for you guys because i think it's so important to be empowered and to know that you're not missing out trust me on the people that you cut out you are in, you are actually doing so much good for yourself and all the members of your tribe when you establish this circle of supporting, positive, wonderful people for you and especially for your children. One thing I wanna add about how so many people showed up to the baby shower and not so many showed up to see the actual baby um, is that it's kind of cool how life does work. Sometimes life weeds people out for you. So 
I trust that the people who really aren't as active in my life anymore don't need to be. And I wish them well, and there's no, you know, animosity or anger. If I ran into them at the store, I would hug them. I think the feeling is totally mutual, but it was, I think, just like, wow, I didn't think that you wouldn't even have met my son by now. Like, I drove hours to meet your son um, or daughter. I, I came over to your house, and so, you know, we can't always expect people to do for us what we do for them, and it wasn't that I did that for them so that I could get something in return. Um, but it is unfortunate when things don't go, come back to you in a mutual way. It just is. Here is some fun footage from his <laughs> not one, not two, but three birthday extravaganzas. We really shouldn't call them extravaganzas because they were pretty low key. His three low key birthday celebrations. These are in no particular order. They're kind of all mixed up for you guys to see, but we had a great time at all three shenanigans, <laughs> birthday festivities. And you'll see my grandmother here. She was on the throne as the bubble queen at the park birthday. And that worked out really well because we love being outdoors and in nature. So we got a little bit of everything. We got some indoor time. That's Momo, his great grandma. And of course his grandma. You can see here that we had a beautiful day in terms of weather. It was great to get a bunch of friends together. And again, it was also great that we had family separate because we really were able to spend quality time with people that we love and care for instead of it being a bunch of people that we weren't necessarily able to even spend time with. And my little Smith baby, my Smith toddler, got to spend time with his little cousins and his second cousins and his aunts and all that good stuff. So this is what I think it's about. It's about enjoying memories, making memories, spending time with those you love, and when I say quality over quantity, this is what I mean. Really being in the moment with those nearest and dearest to your heart. And uh, after he opened up his birthday presents, they immediately were played with. So the musical instruments were probably the biggest hit, I would say. Um, but of course, like always, the box is always a big hit too. So sometimes he would open up a gift and play with the bag or the box more than the toy. Um, I did make, of course, a more natural alternative. I made healthy cupcakes. Here are some of the products I used to make the healthy cupcakes. That's vegan frosting. Um, you can use this food coloring, which is made from actual nature and food instead of dyes. These are the ingredients that went into his smash cake. And this is what the box looks like. Um, it was really low in sugar actually had protein which was great and I sprinkled some honey on it because he can have honey now that he's one. As far as breastfeeding, yes he still is breastfeeding. I'm thinking that you know originally it was like my goal is a year that's how long I want to breastfeed for and now that we're at a year and we're going smooth and uh, I wouldn't say anything's ever like super easy but things are smooth. Um, I would be okay with breastfeeding till he's two, uh, assuming he wants to, and if he doesn't, I'm cool with that too. I don't have like a hard, like he needs to be done by this time or that time. I do know that when he has a mouthful of teeth, he can eat a sandwich and he can make his own sandwich. <laughs> That's my own philosophy, but you know, to each their own, you guys know how I feel. If you're not hurting anybody, rock on. If, if whatever you're doing is working for you guys, more power to you. And it may not be my way of doing things, but that doesn't mean that your way is wrong. It's right for you and mine is right for me. That's what's so cool, right? There's so many different different ways to, to do things, different strokes for different folks. If anyone tells you that having a baby does not affect your relationship, they're lying to you. So let's talk about that. It's impossible for a new life to come into your life, to live in your house, to sleep in your bed, to be attached to your body, um, first inside and then outside. You know, first they're in your belly and then they're attached to your boob. It's impossible for that not to affect your relationship. But what's really cool is that it can actually affect your relationship in an amazing, positive way. So there was this family born. When my son was born, there was a family born. And my husband and I 
who are really honestly best friends, which I think is probably one of the most important parts to, to this. We went from being like best friends and husband and wife to mommy and daddy too. I'm not gonna tell you it's been just like all rainbows and butterflies because there's, there are challenges. You know, when you're both sleep deprived, when you're both exhausted, it's easy to snap at each other. It's easy to get frustrated with each other. Um, I think it helps that we have the same idea for parenting, the same parenting style. We believe the same um, philosophies. We feel the same way. The things that we didn't agree on, we, we talked about very um, thoroughly before he got here. So we weren't facing those challenges once he was here. It also helps that we have been together for 15, 15 or 16 years, been together for a long time. So we've, you know, ironed out a lot of um, the challenges, pr you know, before going into this. Um, for some, there can be financial strain when a baby comes and that financial strain can then cause stress to a relationship. Um, fortunately, we didn't have to face that. We had planned for this for quite some time. Uh, maybe that's one positive thing that infertility gives to you is time. <laughs> um, it gives you the option, the ability to be as prepared as you can because you have the time to think and to, to do things to prepare. Um, I would say the biggest thing, aside from us feeling stronger and more bonded, is that I do sometimes miss him. And I miss Josh because my time is being pulled by this little man who needs me more right now. And, and so I can see how some people say like, oh, we had kids and we grew apart. But because I've heard that so many times, my husband and I have really made it a point to make sure that we don't grow apart. Um, so whether that's a no cell phone rule at the table, like when it, at dinner time there's a no cell phone rule. We sit down, we talk, we look at each other. Or um, another one is that, you know, we try to every single day have a moment that's just for us. So usually what that is, is it's when my um, son goes to bed at night in his crib, I'll come downstairs and we'll talk about like what our days look like. In addition to like, we talk all throughout the day. I probably, I probably call him and he probably calls me like, maybe like 10 to 12 times a day. And it's like silly goofball pointless stuff and then we text each other pictures of what happened or what's going on. So we stay kind of connected with the technology we have but we don't let the technology we have keep us apart. You gotta watch that. Um, and then so at night we'll like have sit down and have dinner together. If we didn't have dinner as a family with our son then we'll have dinner together. Um, maybe it's watching our favorite shows because we do love our TV as I've talked about in a previous video. Um, so we just make sure to stay connected. Um, I would say that all of this is possible and all of this can either work for you or it can work against you. You can say, oh, well now we have a kid so we can't do that. And it's like, no, now you have a kid so you need to do that. You, you need to do that as much as you needed it before. If not, you might not even need that more now because your time is less with each other or you don't have that same one-on-one -on -one time together. We can't be as spontaneous. We can't just say like, oh, let's go to the movies. It's 11 o'clock at night, let's just go to the movies. That's not happening. Or, hey, let's go in the jacuzzi at you know, two on a Saturday. <laughs> no, we can't just like go jump off and do things. Um, we still do spontaneous things, you know, but it's different. So it does change things. And if anyone says to you, no, nothing's different, they're lying to you. I've seen my husband become the best father a boy could ever ask for. And that has made me fall even deeper in love with my husband. And I also recently joined Fit for Mom, which you can find one in your area. You just go to Fit for Mom's website and then um, type in your uh, zip code and they'll tell you where and who and all the details of your group. And so I have been doing workouts with Fit for Mom and it's essentially an extension of stroller strides. It's so cool because if you've seen my Instagram, we meet up in these beautiful locations and which are all like local close by and you work out with your kids how perfect is that so you don't have to find a babysitter which i love um and so you put your kiddo in a stroller and then the workouts include doing things like with your kids while you're while you're working out so for example we'll do like line up all the strollers in a circle he found his daddy um, you line up all this, the strollers like in a circle, per se. Um, and then we'll sing like, Oh McDonald had a farm, you know, and on this farm he had a duck. And then you have to do duck walks all around the strollers in a circle um, with resistance bands. 
and you feel the burn. I was sore. Oh no, what happened, baby boy? You feel the burn fairly instantly, at least I did, because though I've been hiking, I haven't been doing resistance band workouts. Um, and then we'll go jogging with the strollers to this you know, area where there's a curb. Then you do tricep dips. Um, we'll do squats. And again, someone you know, will have a sing, head, shoulders, knees, and toes while you're doing that. And you have to be just doing squats and touching your head, shoulders, knees, and toes at the same time. Uh, and then the instructor will go walking around with like the bubbles um, for the kids. And so you're singing kids songs, but incorporating it into a workout that's kicking your butt. And then afterwards, there's like a play date. So all the kids get out of the strollers and um, play at the park or on the grass. And sometimes the instructors will bring little activities for the kids to do. Like we just did a mommy's day, mother's day uh, crafts. And so that was cool. And it's a neat way to, to multitask, which moms are really good at. But it gives us the opportunity to work out, have our kids get to play, um, and then you get to socialize, both you and your kids get to socialize. So I love that about it. And I already feel like it's making a difference with my body, so that's also good for the self-esteem. And with that being said, this is the last video of my series. It feels good to end this video series, Mother's Day weekend, super appropriate, and as my baby now turns to a toddler. Last but not least, I just want to extend a very heartfelt thank you to you guys. Um, I started my YouTube videos when I had just been diagnosed with infertility and I was completely distraught. I was upset. I was devastated. Upset's an understatement. And I came to YouTube to find a solution, natural cures, ways that I could get um, that baby that I wanted so badly and that's where many of you found out about me and met me um, whether it's in person or social media and so many of you have followed me from that day on till now so I kind of feel like you've been there from the beginning and now you know sort of the the end so to speak of that that journey um, it's now the beginning of a new journey now I have a toddler and um, I really want all of you to know that for every single comment that you've you've commented or post or shared video or every ounce of love that you've given to me along this journey it meant so much to me and be so thank you guys so much for watching my videos thank you so much for sharing and supporting thank you so much for all the love that you've given to my whole family we appreciate you and for those of you who are still trying to conceive I know the pain I know the tears I know the journey firsthand I don't want you to give up it's such an amazing reward when you reach it that it's so worth whatever you have to do to get there and however you have to get there whether that's that you adopt a baby that you have a surrogate that you do um, in you know natural IVF like we did or or however your baby finds you everything's meant to be and if there's a will, there's a way, right? That's what I believe. So again, thank you guys so much for watching. I truly appreciate you and send my love to all of you. Bye.